Welcome to Counselors in the Car Getting Coffee. My name is Gordon Gooding. I'm Margaret Lorenz. And I'm Leona Ross. Yes. We are two and three, three. Long Island based counselors. Um, and we are on our way to go get some coffee like we do every week. And as we do that, we're going to talk a little bit about some current trends and issues in the mental health field while we uh, go get some caffeine. Yes. So, um, we are lucky enough to have uh, someone I consider very, I'm very close to and a good friend and a colleague at our practice at Gooding Wellness, our assistant director, Leanna Ross. Leanna, you want to introduce yourself yes. to everybody? And Yes, my name is Liana Ross. I'm a licensed mental health counselor and a KSAC, which is a credentialed alcohol and substance abuse counselor. And I specialize in working with trauma, uh, disordered eating, body image, anxiety, relationships, and substance abuse addiction. And I'm the assistant director at Gooding Wellness, and I'm and, very happy to be here. And the host, the host of yes, Let's Be Honest Podcast. Let's Be Honest Podcast, which we will put Put down here a link to right (laughs) yes below yes so and i know you have covered some amazing topics on your podcast and we're proud to be a part of it so uh thank you for coming out to uh join us oh of course it's a pleasure so fun and the coffee's on us us so even better (laughs) yeah hi day so margo what are we going to talk about today on our way to get some coffee so today we're going to talk about emdr therapy emdr therapy which is what does it stand for again? Eye movement I, desensitization I, reprocessing. Yes, I have to learn. I always remember. I, that's, I always get mixed those mixed up those letters. But say one more. Eye movement desensitization reprocessing. Yes. Okay. Which is cutting edge. And Leon, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and how that it's uh, different from regular CBT and you or are, talk therapy. Because you're trained in EMDR. Yes. Yes, I just got trained in EMDR, which was a great experience, and I've been doing it with my clients, and it's been awesome to witness the change. So what it is, it's an eight-phase process, which includes um, information gathering, kind of getting to know your client, what's going on for them. It includes preparation and stabilization, making sure that the person is, has enough coping skills and you know it's a safe environment for them to do EMDR and then it leads into reprocessing. So that will include the eye movements because what they've seen is that it's kind of like when you go on a walk and you you know when you go on a walk and you feel super calm, Mm -hmm. it's because of that bilateral stimulation, it targets that amygdala in the brain. Amygdala, yes. And the amygdala is actually what causes us to get into that fight, flight, or freeze mode. And so what we're trying to do is that when we take a memory, we utilize eye movement desensitization. So what I would do is you would follow my fingers back and forth Mm -hmm. and we would reprocess the memory, which means therapist is kind of out of the picture, right? Like not my usual style Uh and allowing the client to share whatever is coming up for them. And there's a lot of... So these are usually memories? Are they thoughts? Or what does that kind of look like? So, for example, if let's say I'm struggling with dating, and for some reason I'm just like fearful of dating, um, and it brings up feelings of fear and anxiety, the next step would be, well, what does that mean about me? And also, when was other times I felt this way? right the fear and the anxiety and then we start talking about and through this information gathering talking about other times that i felt fear and anxiety maybe it's around people or people i would date or whatever it is and the goal is to go back 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 into Mm -hmm. the earlier memories sometimes through childhood Mm -hmm. because the early childhood memories that we have influence who we are now Mm-hmm. Sometimes we don't realize it. Sometimes we get people who say, oh, no, I'm over that. Like, no big deal. And sometimes we are. But um, a lot of times we don't realize that there's some stuff repressed there that we have not uncovered. And therefore, it's now impacting us now in the way we view ourselves. So, mm-hmm. so is it, and maybe you just answered this, I don't know. But you know, 
I'm good at asking redundant questions. If I refuse to say so myself. But it's, so is it, they have an awareness of these memories or not always? So... Like, it's not, it doesn't, like, dig up stuff that's not there, but it's, like, are they aware that they had this event or this something that happened to them when they were younger and, and never made the connection between this feeling and dating and that feeling of whatever? Is it, yes, exactly. Like, they remember it's there. EMDR is not a fact-finding procedure mm -hmm. so right like if I, like I won't just all of a sudden remember something that I never remembered in the past um, when we're going through this information gathering process it'll be things that you're actively remembering so if we and it's allowing ourselves to sit with those memories and also having the space to kind of dig back because sometimes on the surface we might not remember but as mm -hmm. we're working with the therapist and we're sitting in that space to allow our minds to float back we tend to remember them but again mm -hmm. it's nothing that like we wouldn't remember we wouldn't normally. remember it's not right. like you know they put you in some type of trance and right. all of a sudden mm -hmm. you remember something that yeah. wasn't there or was there or whatever but it's really like active memories and how they impact you and mm -hmm. isn't it like linking one memory to another like i start yes. with remembering um, but that I didn't want, you know, I got stood up for prom and that brings me back to, uh, another memory and then another memory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That happens a lot. I find with people where we'll be focused on one memory and then all of a sudden during the processing, they'll be able to remember like, Oh, you know what? That reminds me of when my dad, you know, forgot me at school. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, they always like they knew it was there, but they didn't see how it was connected until now. So seeing how these memories are actually connected um, through the processing, and then you reprocess those memories. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once we get to a low level of disturbance through the eye movement, because mm -hmm. that's the goal, we want to now build upon the positive cognition. Right. If my negative cognition was. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. We want to replace that with the I am good enough. So now just like we tried to reduce the stress associated with the memory, we're trying to build up our, I guess, positive thoughts about ourselves and the memory and just who we are in, in whole. Um, yeah. So the thing we're going through, may we may or may not be aware how it re might relate to something in our, our childhood or, yes. or some other traumatic event say mm -hmm. like if it's like you said relationship anxiety or something but maybe you had a bad experience or something traumatic happened or just difficult happen it connects those two things yes mm -hmm. yes and it's pretty cool because sometimes when we work on the first memory mm -hmm. and we have a whole list of memories under the same category when we're starting to work on the first memory and that's cleared we notice that actually working through the other memories become pretty quick Mm -hmm. Like we're able to kind of work through them pretty quickly because they're really all connected in the same memory network. Mm -hmm. So I, I love this stuff. Like, and I did it. Yeah. I just want to say, yeah. and I found it very helpful for me with some of my stuff, but maybe before, cause we're, we're going to get some coffee cause we're, uh, we just pulled up to sweetie pies, our favorite coffee spot, very nice. or at least mine. Um, cause it is where our office is. How does that buy the, the, the lateral, bilateral like whether that's you know sometimes it's tapping sometimes mm -hmm. it's a finger like do you have, have any idea how that does reconnect the brain and those memories like how, how does that work yeah so it not only calms us but it also triggers the part in our brain that's associated with the traumatic experiences or like the fight flight or freeze response so as we're like if I'm thinking about the memory that time my dad didn't pick me up from school and I'm also doing the bilaterals, I'm pairing that calming effect and the, the connection it has to my brain to that memory. Oh. So now, now through many rounds of the eye movements, after a while it becomes actually less distressing and you hear that in the person's feedback. After mm -hmm. every time we do about 20 to 30 bilaterals, the person starts after, and, and every everyone is different. It takes longer a lot of times, and it's not a one, two, you know, three process. But eventually, they get to the point of like, you know what? It wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. Or like, I'll mm -hmm. think about it. I'm not forgetting it, right? We're mm -hmm. not trying to forget these things, but I'm not it feeling takes the as, weight out of it. Yeah, yeah, like I'm not feeling activated by it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's the feedback I've been getting from my clients. Just personally. by that 
that you know I mean I'm, I'm, I know there's more to it in terms yeah. of the procedures and stuff but that's so fascinating that that's just such a soothing technique yeah mm -hmm. maybe yeah. It, it keeps you from being activated again in the present when it was something that happened in the past yeah and I've even had clients say to me like I tried to even think about it over the week to see if I'd get activated and I wasn't Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. That's, oh, that's, that's really powerful. That's it is. Really very, and I'm like, I think we're both kind of like, oh, is this real? Like, like, yeah. That's, yeah, that's exciting, right? Yeah. yeah, it's very exciting. And and you can use that for, for a number of different issues that a client might come to you with. Yes, yes. So it was founded for people, Francine Shapiro, who founded EMDR, uh, first started using it with people with PTSD, like veterans. And then over mm -hmm. the years, they found that really it can work with anyone, anxiety, depression, phobias, OCD, um, eating disorders, um, you know, and there's some other type of requirements when it comes to more complex cases. If someone has complex PTSD or addiction or grief, um, but it can be applied to, to really any issue. As long mm -hmm. as the person has enough resources and coping skills, and we want to make sure that person has a foundation of safety. That's really neat. Why don't we get a cup of coffee? Okay. I, I would I still want to know a little bit more about, like, it's got to be appropriate for some people and not for others, right? And yes. That, so um, let's get a little caffeine. First. Okay. And then we'll do that, and then we'll come back. Hey, we're back. We are back. The car is beeping. I just got a little coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Sweetie Pies. Shout out. Shout out to Sweetie Pies. Sweetie Pies in Cold Spring Harbor, New Long Island. Our home turf. Not Cold Spring Right Harbor. above our yeah. office. We're, we had an iShare in office right above our office. Right below our office, I should say. Yeah, they have lovely they have pies. Lots, and... They sell lots of good calories. Oh, very yeah. nice. The best. <laughs> so, okay. EMDR. Let's continue this little discussion. Is it, now, is it appropriate for everyone or? That's a good question. So it's like I was kind of saying before, if, if it can be appropriate for most people. If mm -hmm. let's say someone comes in and they're really in crisis mode or they can't get themselves out of crisis or they have lack of coping skills, lack of emotional regulation. That's uh -huh. where I wanted to get mm -hmm. to. And it will take more time for us. We want to make sure that they have developed some emotional regulation skills before they do EMDR. Mm -hmm. But if let's say the person just continuously struggles with it, it might not be appropriate. Uh -huh. um, never to say never, but just at least right not now. Mm -hmm. um, also, they have found that some personality disorders might not be appropriate. Like if someone who is narcissistic personality disorder, as we know, mm -hmm. you might not always find them looking to go to therapy on their own. Right. right. Almost never. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, I mean, so oh, I, I'm sorry. Actually, people with severe anxiety, like someone, not just like I get worried over certain things, mm -hmm. someone who, again, kind of like that instability or has a difficulty emotionally regulating, I think over time, we can probably get them to a place to emotionally regulate. Uh -huh. Um, and that could be more complex case. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not like they're not appropriate, but it just might take some more tools and resourcing. Um, and same when it comes to addiction. People who have addiction or addictive issues, they're, it's better to do the work, more work first before EMDR, mm -hmm. right? So like- So have some type of basis of sobriety, support yeah. network and those things instead of just going right into it. Yeah, I could- Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, and there's no like level of clean time someone needs to have before they do it. It's it's really like you said, what they have going on for them, their you know foundation of sobriety and recovery um, beforehand. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty. Oh, and then also with where well, I think we're going to talk about this in a little bit, so uh -huh. I won't jump to it. No, you can go ahead. Okay. What do you got? So, 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 I like it. Yeah, come on. We're all friends here. That's good. What do you got? Um, when it, you can't do it on yourself. So tapping is uh -huh. another tool that we can use instead of the eye movements, which looks like this, uh -huh. which is totally fine to do an EMDR. And it's also a good tool to use on your own when you know you want to calm yourself down, you're getting a little heightened. It's a good coping tool. It's different. Tapping is different than EMDR or is it somewhat related to it? So I don't, I'm not familiar. tapping, the, the act of tapping can be used instead of someone following my finger. So you can uh -huh. give someone the option. Would you rather 
um, do the tapping or would you rather do the eye movement? Sometimes we switch off in the middle of the reprocessing. Um, but you can't really, you can't necessarily do EMDR, the whole process on your own. I wouldn't, yeah, I would. Right. I would but you could use the tapping sense. in what situation? Just like self-soothe? Yeah, self-soothing. Self-soothing. And would this be doing this as a... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I know. Interesting. You know, there's a tapping. Well, you just said uh, Prince Harry. Prince somebody? Harry does do that because that was on, on the YouTube. That was on the YouTube? Yeah, that's what, the that's YouTube. what YouTube says. Yes. That's what you, that means it's true. Well, you have, you have, well, it does show him doing this. So I didn't watch the video. I'm assuming that he was doing that. that was, okay. But this can help with soft soothing. Yes, totally. Okay. And they do and they do have an app for the tapping solution to help just with soothing down anxiety. And it can show like you. if you're in an elevated state yeah. and you can't, you can't really mm. relax and that, that yeah. kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. Because sometimes anxiety, you know, we have a lot of clients that will do this, like the anxiety just takes over. And I, I would mm -hmm. think that'd be a really hard time to delve into any of this type yes. of work. Yes, yes. But yes. Is, this, is it the same bilateral stimulation yeah, it's like that the, helps to calm It's like the down? same when you go for a walk and you notice yourself getting more relaxed because it's that same, like, kind of bilateral movement of doing the two sides of our brain. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so it can be like a self-soothing method. It's pretty interesting. Now, if I if I'm going to see an EMDR therapist, because I can also see on Reddit that some people are anxious about EMDR, what should I be looking for from the therapist, or what questions should I be asking to make sure that I'm, when I bring up these difficult memories, I'm in a safe space? Yes. So there's actually a tool within, or a few tools within the EMDR process, and that facilitate a more safe space regarding like we actually do a technique called safe space uh -huh. where it's an exercise where me and the client will I'll do some prompting for them to figure out what is a safe space and how does it bring them to a space of calm that they can use not only in the MDR process or after we are finished reprocessing but also in between sessions and we also do other coping tools like the container exercise or grounding exercise resourcing but when, in regards to, so I would ask your therapist, what what do I do if I feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? Like you don't want to have a therapist who's going to like push you to keep going. Um, it's very important to have a stop signal. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that the therapist is very much aware of that, of like, you know, let's have a dialogue of what it might look like for you if you're feeling overwhelmed and you want to stop. Um, also, if the therapist is okay with, or allows you to not do EMDR every session because oh. a lot of times it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's yeah. very heavy. And like, it can be, yeah. Life is still happening. Yes. So a lot of times I'll kind of make the decision as I'm talking to a client and I'll talk, I'll share that with them about like, oh, I don't think today's the day to keep doing it because there's a lot of stuff going on that I think this person just really needs Everybody to talk about. Needs some, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and just to clarify, EMDR is not. Not every therapist is trained in EMDR. Right, right. Like yeah. you went to a special training, training for, I mean, it was a long one. Yeah. To get certified in that and trained in that and, you know. Yeah, you so want to make sure that your therapist is trained in EMDR. Yes. Yeah, it's one thing to know about EMDR. It's another thing to be trained in EMDR. Right, right, right? exactly. And if you, you can even ask, what training did you do? Because we know there are a lot of trainings that, yeah. that are not 110% or are not accredited. Um, are not legit, right? Like a two-hour training in EMDR it's is not, not going to cut a training, it, yeah. right? Like mm -hmm. it's hours. It's it's not only um, an active on like you're there in the training for hours, but you're also doing it's, consultation groups uh -huh. after the training's over and practicing yeah. it. And um, I remember when you did yours. That was long weekends and meetings in between and yeah. consultation groups in between. I'm doing it in July. It's a week long thing. Like it's yeah, you know. So it's not for every. You know. That's why I always think you know people mm -hmm. people need to know. It's yes. Very specific training and it's a lot involved with it. Yeah, and not to be shy to ask questions. Yeah. To ask, where were you trained yeah. and what, how long ago was it or when was it, you know. Yeah, what are you doing to upkeep the education? How often do you see people and utilize EMDR? Yep. I always say, like, you're hiring the therapist. Right. Right? 100%. Like, they work for you. Yes. Yeah, you've got to get somebody you know you feel confidence with, you know. Right. And, and sometimes you feel like you're comfortable enough to ask questions. Yeah. You know? Right. Because if you're not comfortable, maybe that's, that's a, a red flag. That's a red flag. I, I agree. 
So, um, so, so if I already see someone who's not, uh, not trained in EMDR, do I just change therapists if I want to try this? Do I fire my current therapist? So you could, you could do. You gotta kind of bail on her like yeah, that. Or yeah, yeah. That's that's see, you're, uh, is that how you roll? Is that no, how you do? No, yeah, no, I'm asking you. Just more, dump people I, like I that. I am not yet trained in EMDR. <laughs> is everyone going to leave me? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'm not either. Yes. <laughs> no, that's a good question. So you could do a few things. Um, what I'm currently doing right now, and we've done at the practice, is um, like. Another clinician is currently working with a cl with a client, and I'm also working with them to do EMDR, um, adding onto their services. Mm -hmm. Now, that person, that client, could easily reduce their usual sessions by weekly. Mm -hmm. um, they could take a break and just do focus on EMDR for a little bit, um, <clears throat> at, or yeah, I mean, you could really do a bunch of different things. Also, so you can. You so you wouldn't have to just go through everything again. Like I have clients be like, I don't want to start from scratch with a new right. therapist. Like you wouldn't necessarily. If someone went to see you, they were seeing uh, me for therapy, but they needed to want to do some EMDR work to work on a very specific trauma mm -hmm. or goal, mm -hmm. right? They wouldn't have to kind of go through every little thing again. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. And and I've been able to see that, and it's actually been working really well. Um, and yeah, so it's not, there's no like starting over. There's no, you know, having to fill in on your whole life story. It's mm -hmm. very specific. And honestly, I have a great idea of what the person's going through. And yeah, I don't need to know because it's really about them doing the process and their brain doing the work. Does that help them to then take advantage of regular talk therapy? Yeah. More? Yeah. Because now I've been able to see they're able to process even just what they've noticed in the EMDR sessions with their primary therapist, which is mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, and same thing, like the person, there's a lot going on for this person this week and I wasn't gonna jump right into EMDR. It was just, I could tell they were emotionally exhausted and uh -huh. I shared that and they were like, yeah, you're right. I, I'm not in it for today. And oh. this, this structured, mm -hmm. you have to do it with this therapist every single time. So. Uh, it's just nice because sometimes it's like you know even therapy I say you got it it's good to go it's good to take a breather it's good to go you know like mm -hmm. not yeah. to be so intense all the time with you know, right. something like that there's no have tos and I will also say a big thing that I find is people who are tend to be perfectionists or want things to be right they will ask like is this right is this okay is that what I'm supposed to say and it's like I always tell people there's no supposed tos mm -hmm. there's no you need to. There's no perfect way. Shoulds. Yeah, there's no, no shoulds. shoulds. Go ahead. You just gotta go for it. You want me to say? It? Say, it, go ahead. You want me to say? It's your tagline. I got you. It's, I got it's it. your thing. You put me on the spot. It's your thing. Like it's like your cowabunga. Like, <laughs> like don't don't shit all over yourself. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you want to say? Yeah. There you go. Sorry. Was sorry. Yeah. sorry. Sorry. It's I'm sorry. We digress. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's nice. So it doesn't have to be like starting from scratch, getting a new therapist, throwing all the work with one person. Like, it can really complement yeah. what you're doing already. Yeah. It can be an add-on. Totally. Totally. And it can really help the your first your original therapist to move forward with you more quickly. Yeah. 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 It can really like speed up the process. <laughs> if someone's having really intense emotional reactions to something, that's something that EMDR would be really good for. Yes. Right? Like, yes. let's say if there was a traumatic, uh, like, assault or even just uh, something really difficult that happened that brought up a lot of ang a constant mm -hmm. anxiety, right? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't always have to be these big traumatic things, right? But no. it, But it does work with that. Yeah. Like, if even if, like, your high school boyfriend still, like, brings up some stuff for you and you're like, I don't know why this is happening to me. I'm, like, a lot older and whatever it might be, like, that's a good thing to explore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for big things and for little things. Totally. Little big T's, little T's. Big T's and little T's. Miniature T's. You know, yeah. um, we wrote a very nice, a little shameless plug for us, but I know you helped me, Liana. We wrote this really nice blog on EMDR recently mm -hmm. on our website, which we will... Put in the comments below. Put here. Yes. Put here, but I think a lot of those things are in there. And we talked about, I think that one, we talked about the big T's yeah. and little T's. You know, because mm -hmm. not everything has got to be... Yeah. Huge. But it still has a major impact on yeah, us, right? Yeah, still have a huge impact, yes. Right. Right. So. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Oh, of course. Well, we thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Where can, uh, where can people find you? You can 
find me on goodingwellness.com and you can find me. Should I share my Instagram? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll put that in the in show the, notes. In yes. the links. <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram at your trauma therapist and you can look at my podcast and listen to it um, at, oh God, there's so many. Let's be honest on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, uh-huh. also on Instagram. And we're doing a new season after the summer, so really hyped for that. Yes, and I'm excited uh, for that. Yeah, so we will put all of that in the notes below. Um, Liana, thank you for everything thank you, you do for us, Thanks and for clients. And I'm, well, thank you so much for coming and grabbing some coffee with us. Always. And we'll see you next Monday. See you next Monday.